Father, we give you the praise. We thank you for yesterday. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you started to do since we woke up this morning. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you lift up your hands and give him praise? Give him praise. Customize your praise to him. If he's done anything in your life, go ahead and give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the praise. We thank you. We bless your name. You're worthy. We can't even thank you enough for your faithfulness, for your goodness. If we had a bad news today, we wouldn't be here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because in your presence there is life. Expressions of your love. Revelations. Revelations of your power and mind. Here, your presence I can bring. My love song offering. My love song offering. I'm in the presence of my King. I tell you. Because he, his presence there is love. Expressions of his love. Expressions of your love. Revelations of your power and might. Revelations of your power and might. Hallelujah. Your presence I can bring. My love sung of the Presence, I'm content. Sing it. Thank you, Jesus. I am content. Hallelujah. In your presence, I am content. Oh, in your presence, there is light. Stretches of Sweet aroma. I'm in your presence, oh Lord. I'm in the presence of my Yes, Shetere Baba. Rakaba Rakaba Satari Bali. I'm in the presence of my King. Oh, I'm in your presence. I'm in your presence, Lord. I'm in the presence of Moses my said to you, if your presence will not go with us, do not let us. I'm in the presence of my King. Your presence make the difference. I'm in your presence, Lord. I'm in the presence, your presence of life. my King. Dear Lord, in your presence there is life. Expressions of your love. Expressions of your love. Revelations of your power. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your presence. Makes all the difference. If we are more than 5,000 here and you are not present, is activity and futility. We appreciate your presence. Koza celebrates you. We're going to pray before we take our seats. You're going to say in the name of Jesus. You're going to see what the word says. Say, I will not die this year. I will live to declare his works. 
go ahead and pray that prayer i will not die but live to declare his works in the name of jesus begin to address everything that is not of god begin to take authority on your eyes on your head on your nose on your throat anything that is not of god i will not die any evil clinical prophecy i come against it right now in the name of jesus i will not die but the leave to declare his works in the name of jesus declare it let the redeemer of the lord say so i will not die but leave in the name of jesus in jesus name we pray you're going to declare from your heart say blood of jesus fight everything that is not of god trying to flourish around me in the name of jesus blood of jesus fight everything that is not of god trying to flourish around me pray that prayer in your office in your business in your ministry blood of jesus fight everything extinguish everything that is trying to flourish it is those who are planted in the house of the lord that shall flourish in the courts of their god anything that is not of god begin to get extinguished right now in the name of jesus how many believe in your authority believe in prayer in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus precious name we pray you are going to decree and declare i'm getting better and better i'm getting sweeter and sweeter i'm getting riper and riper i'm shining more and more declare that scripture over your life this is the least i will ever be i'm getting younger every day my youth is renewed like that of an ego god satisfies my mouth with good things in the name of jesus the intent of my adversary will never come to pass i'm getting brighter and brighter i'm shining more in the name of jesus get it in your mouth there's power in your mouth that my path is like a shining light i'm shining more and more until the perfect day i will leave this earth gloriously in the name of jesus pray that prayer from your heart things are getting better for me in the name of jesus my family is getting better my ministry is getting better my career is getting better declare it declare it get into your mouth i will never remain the same my path is like a shining light don't joke with it declare it in the name of jesus my yesterdays will not be better than my tomorrow best days are ahead of me declare it thank you father in jesus precious name you're going to declare say father in the name of jesus let everything about me respond to the prophetic word that is declared over me pray that prayer everything about me respond to the prophetic word declared over me in the name of jesus now begin to take authority against every disobedience in your life anything that want to raise its ugly head take authority because god has spoken already in the name of jesus declare that you're the head and not the tail declare it begin to take authority over every disobedience oh thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. 
in Jesus precious name we pray it. Father we thank you we are confident and we are happy because we know that when we pray according to your will you hear us and if you hear us the Bible says our petitions will be met we thank you because we will come back to share our testimony we vow in this service people that are watching online and those of us that are here physically we vow that we will give you all the glory thank you Father now, within the conference of time that we have, instruct us, direct us, point us to the right place. Let your will be done in the line. Let your counsel stand. Thank you, Father. Now, I take authority over every mistake. Mistake bullets, mistake accidents. In the name of Jesus, it will not happen to us. We come back with testimonies in Jesus' precious name. Clap for Jesus and take your seats. <laughs> Isaiah, love you right back. God bless you. Isaiah 119 is my deliberation this morning. Isaiah 119. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Some people are willing. They want God to perform. They want God to do what he wants to do. But they don't want to do what God has asked them to do. If you think you're too smart for God, too bad. Bible instructs us not to be wise in our own eyes. So is, Paul says to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Not one of the wise ones. The only wise God. He has made the wisdom of this world foolish. He has chosen foolish things. The miraculous is actually hidden in the ridiculous. That's why if God tells you do this, you will see results you've never seen before. That's the way God operates, not a fluke. That's the reason why when the devil came in Genesis chapter 3, the first question he asked, in fact, the first person to ask a question in the Bible is the devil. What has God said? Because he knew that their promotion their protection, their enlargement, the reality of God's word, what God said in Genesis 128, when he blessed them, is heed in instructions. So if you are a Christian and you've heard a wrong, you, you've, you've had the wrong message, now we all grow in God. The Bible says even Jesus Christ learned obedience. It's something you have to pay attention to. And you don't start by hearing God. Oh, I just heard, God just told me I should do this. Mm, start with the written word. The written word is clear. Let me tell you something. God has set his word above himself. If God sets the word, please don't let me say word, the Bible above himself, you, you must pay attention to it. It's not something for people that are serious with God and God, God, I know the covenant I have with God. No. Yes, God is merciful. God is long-suffering. But his word stands. The Bible says the foundation of the Lord stands forever. The Lord knows those who are his. And those who are his should depart from lawlessness. Don't do what you want. You will muddy the water. Don't do what is convenient. Don't do what is trending. You will spoil what God is saying. The Bible says, nevertheless, this is the person that teaches grace. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. It has a seal. Telling you, your case is not different. When it comes to the counsel of the Lord, you have to align. It's not the dream you had. It's not your mindset. It's not what you thought about. No. That's why God wrote the Bible. Now, mercy is there. Grace is there. So if things are working, it doesn't mean God is happy with you. God is giving you a, a time to do his will. And I know you will do his will. Why? Because what God wants to give to you is bigger than what you are receiving right now. The Bible says the foundation of God stands having the seal. What is written in the seal? 
The Lord knows those who are His. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity or lawlessness. You must depart from it. Despite the fact that you're in grace. The word of God is not such that when you hear it, you say, oh, yeah, 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 I believe it. You must respond. Let me tell you something. Whatever you claim to hear or you, you, you believe in and does not change you, you never believed in it. You just agreed with what was said. A lot of us behave as if God is not talking to us. You remember the widow that God said, I've commanded the widow to feed you Elijah. And Elijah met her and she pretended like God has, had not spoken to her. That's the way some of us behave. As if we don't understand what God has said. In Jeremiah 7.23. I need to move fast. Jeremiah 7.23. But this is what I commanded them. Say, obey my voice. And I will be your God. And you shall be my people. Walk in all the ways that I've commanded you. That is me be well with you. Now, in the Old Testament, if you do this, it will be well with you. In the New Testament, it is already well with you. Do this so that you don't open the door for the enemy. This is the difference. So that you don't give the devil a ladder to come into your family, into your life. Now, I'm not talking to everybody. Those of you that feel, oh, what am I supposed to do? You are the one I've been sent to this morning. A lot of people will muddy things that God wants to do in their lives. And they will say, God, why? Where is your face? And God is saying, you didn't do what I told you to do. You don't know the value of obedience until storm actually comes. Remember at the time of Noah, it had not rained before. Just the same way you've not been married before. Just the same way that business you want to do, you've not done before. All the terrain you're going, you've not gone before. So God will give you some instructions because he sees the end from the beginning. But you, 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 you are conscious and, 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 and concerned about now. But God is seeing the future. So as a single person, are you coordinating your relationship in such a way that God is glorified? Is your relationship bringing a sweet aroma to God? Or God is saying, oh, my son cannot handle this. My daughter can handle this. Do you have finance that God regrets that I gave to you? Now you are drinking. Now you are, you are coming home late. And your wife can, yeah, she wants you to prosper, but she's thinking, Last month, this guy wasn't like this. You're asking God for rain, but you don't have provision for umbrella. Are you ready for what you're praying for? Are you obeying God? Verse 24 of Jeremiah 7, the Bible says, Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but follow the counsel and the dictates of their evil arts. Can you see the heart can dictate evil? Art can want some things that you need to control. What happened to them? They went backwards and not forward. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will never go backwards. Yeah. Matthew 7, 24. Bible says, therefore, whoever hears the sayings of mine. So they attend a church. Look at the word hears. It's not once in a while. <laughs> they probably attend the DP. Every time they are learning, every time the word is being spoken to them, it's there's something called overkill in media. When someone appears, it goes, Oh, I've heard this person over and over. You know, it's possible for you, for someone preaching to you to appear, and you say, Oh, here it comes again. Let me just endure 30 minutes. For some people, the word of God is Odish. They will hear it. Odish, in case you don't know what it means, is when they shoot a bullet and it doesn't enter you. you. You bounce it off. The word of God, for some people, is like that. 
They're like Mount Zion, if you allow me to use that. They can't be moved. Nothing moves them. That is not the kind of heart God has given to us. Therefore, whoever hears the sayings of mine and does them is likened to a wise man who built his house on the rock. So if you're going to have a good marriage, you have to be wise. If you're going to have a good career, you have to be smart. Bible says don't be wise in your own eyes. If you are too wise for God's word, too bad. So it's not enough to say, I come for DP, I pray every time. Oh, that person loves God. He prays, but no. Even though God is not holding a club in his hand, ready to strike us down. We are walking, we are learning obedience every day. It seems to me that the more you follow God's plans for your life, the more results you see. So, he's like to a wise man. So, it takes wisdom to build a house. By wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, it is established. Many things you call the devil is lack of wisdom. And when we talk about wisdom, we're not talking about cunning craftiness. We're talking about you following the pattern of God's word for your life. How do you raise your kids? The wisdom of the world or the wisdom of God? I recommend that you go and study about wisdom of God. Christ has been made your wisdom, but you can reject Christ and be wise in your own eyes. This is what a lot of people deal with. In verse 25, the Bible says, the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall. For the house was founded. On the rock or on the what? On the rock or on the what? Think about it. What are you trying to build? Are you building according to the word or you're building the way you want? So you can't, you can't build the way you want, but don't come and blame God to pay for what he didn't order for. Don't say, God, but I prayed before I entered this relationship, but did you do what God told you to do? Oh God, well, before I enter this business, you, you told me this. Did you do what God told you to do? No, you didn't do it. Now, I'm not preaching to you that if you do what God has asked you to do, you will not have a problem. But at the end of the day, number one thing that will happen to you is you have confidence because you've done what God said to do. Number two, the devil knows if he wants to touch you, he's from afar because he knows that victory is sure if you do what God told you to do. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible talks about some people that are always learning, never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Always learning. Is that you? Is that you? Every time there's a word, you are word yourself. <laughs> you are more educated than you're being God's word. It's normal to you. It's not only you, even your friends. For you, oh, God is talking again. It's someone time. You don't take God's word. You are actually seeing a vision right now. Because vision is, you're seeing something and you're hearing something. Stubbornness is something you need to pay attention to. Stubbornness is when you hear God's word and say, no. That's not the way I'm going to do it. That's stubbornness. I pray in the name of Jesus, you'll be pliable. In Hebrews 11 verse 8, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he will receive an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was going. Please, this sounds simple. Number one thing you need to know is that this guy, Ajo, was not on his side. Number two thing you need to know is that they needed him in his family at this time. This was when his father was going to Canaan and was talking Hara. His older brother had died. He wasn't supposed to leave. He's now the firstborn. There are many things Abraham could have considered. Remember those that Jesus called. When we get to heaven, we would have seen their names on the pillar of heaven. One of them said, I want to go and bid my family bye-bye. 
Is it wrong to be the family bye-bye? They read the excuses in the Bible. There are things you need to be careful about. One said, oh, somebody died in my family. I want to go and bury it before I come. And Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. Greek says, let the spiritually dead bury the, the physically dead. Is it wrong to bury your father? Is it wrong to do a proper barrier for someone you're related to? But nothing stands against obeying God's word that will be worth it at the end of the day. By faith, Abraham obeyed. At this point in time, you couldn't do a business except your father handed the business over to you. The equipment, the clientele, for him to move away across the river Euphrates, he started a new lineage. That was, he had to move from faith to trust. That was a serious thing. It's not as if he thought, oh, if I just cross this river, I will have this. I will. No, he was, he was thinking wild animals could have killed him. Many things would have happened. Paint the scenario when you get home or when you're alone or when you're meditating on the scripture. He obeyed, yet he didn't know where he was going. God, he had never seen anybody that, he never heard any testimony that this God, he just made this God. But he trusted and moved. Next verse, verse 9, the Bible says, By faith he dwelled in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob. Here's with him of the same promise. God just made the promise. But what he did was accounted to him for righteousness. I pray in the name of Jesus. As you obey the Lord, God will account some. You will cut a covenant by obedience. In the name of Jesus. Somebody here, the reason why you're on the same level is because God has put his finger on something. If you sacrifice that thing, you'll be shocked what will happen to you. Quit living that way. Whatever God has put his finger on, particularly when he has told you about that thing, let it go. In Genesis 22, we all know the story. I want to read it from verse 18 because of time. You know the story, how Abraham sacrificed Isaac, his son. I think Isaac owned the show, not Abraham. Because according to Bible history, he was 27 years old. When his father went to sacrifice him. He could have said, dad, I can see light. I can see wood. I can see the altar. Where's the sacrifice? Me and the father was tying him. And he trusted his father. He didn't utter a word. Do you trust God with your life? Do you trust God with your future? Some are afraid of your future. You think they are just nice. You think they are relational. Ah, they are afraid. I need to have people on my side. They are afraid of their future. Many years ago, someone came to me and said, Pastor Biano, as you did, Pastor, borrow yourself brain. Where's your land? Where's your house? Huh? Wake up. The first money a young boy sees, he uses it to buy cake. That's the way you're acting. I said, good advice, and I appreciate you. And don't think I always preach about advice people give to me. This is something that for a week I thought about. He wanted to bounce me off God. I called the person. I said, it's out of love you advised me. But you know the bumblebee, you know the law of aerodynamics, says that if your body is bigger than your wings, you can't fly. But before the bumblebee had that law, he already flew. So, he couldn't believe it. I said, if you know where I'm coming from and how God had helped me, I can't follow this advice. And God sorted me out. That's the same way God will sort you out. Listen to me. Your problem is you don't pack all your eggs in God's basket. Move from faith to trust. You are listening to me right now in your car. You're listening at home. Move from faith to trust. Trust God with your life. 
Maybe that's what you, that's the missing ingredient. Confidence in God. Cast not away your confidence for it has a great recompense of reward. When you put one leg here, you put one leg here, let me see which one pays me. <laughs> I told you yesterday, if you stand in the middle of the road, car will hit you. Be on one side. Let's know which side you are. In verse 18 of Genesis 22, because of time, God said, in your seed, you see, God started by talking about his children. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Do you know what could happen to you if you obey God? You see, I, I, I've been preaching for 24 years. I can make you shout here. Yeah. I know what to say. But I made up my mind some years ago that the people God has sent to me, I won't only tell them what God will do. I will tell them what they should do to enjoy what God will do. So you can be quiet. You may not shout. You may not respond. But there are some things I'm telling you that I will not be judged for. Because God entrusted you to my ministry. That's why Paul says, you are the proof of my ministry. There are people, God, if God wants them to, he will make them rewatch this meeting, maybe a year later, to hear, because by your words, you are justified, by your words, you'll be condemned. The key that locks your house is the key that opens your house. Also, if God wants to set you free, he sends someone to speak a word to you. I, re I know that every service, destinies are involved. I pray that what you need to do for that thing to open, you will do it this week. In Job 36 verse 11, Job 36 verse 11, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in. They didn't say if you save yourself. They didn't talk about self-love. <laughs> Putting God first. Bible promises. Listen. Any day I remember, I declare the scripture. If you obey God and serve the Lord, you'll spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Can we read other versions? So, Because you need other versions to declare. Let's read Amplified. Amplified says, if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasantness and joy. I decree over you. You shall spend your years in pleasantness and joy. What does message say? We're going to read two and I will tell you a few things and go. If they obey and serve him, they'll have a good and long life on easy streets. For some people, life is hard. Oh, I read that in the Bible that the ways of a transgressor is hard. <laughs> transgressor does not mean unbeliever. When they wrote in your school, don't walk on the lawn, and you walked, you transgressed. Somebody that moved away from what God has said is a transgressor. The ways are hard. So learn obedience. I'm not condemning you. I don't want you to hear this message and feel bad. No, learn obedience. You, it's something you have to learn. You know that aspect of your life that is working is the aspect that you've learned obedience. Maybe giving. Maybe evangelism. Maybe prayer. And you're seeing results. The same thing with that aspect of your life that is not working. You have to learn it. So why do people not obey God? Why? First thing I notice is that they don't understand that instructions are designed or were designed to see them from destructions. I just told you about the devil. When he came, the first question he asked when he showed up, what has God said? Because he knew their protection. Have you also noticed that God did not discuss Satan with Adam and Eve? So being conscious of the devil is not part of Christianity even though you have to know your adversary. But paying attention to, to him is he, he, called nothing. Nothing. What has God said concerning my finance? What has God said concerning my life? How am I supposed to live in health? 
What has God said? Not what the enemy has said. What has God said? Number two, because of mercy, a lot of people don't do God's word. Because of mercy. You think because mercy exists, you are doing the right thing. No. You don't sit down there and say, huh? if what these pastors are saying are true, will I have this result? No. Because of God's mercy, some people continue. They want to live like that. The goodness of the Lord leads to repentance. Number three, association. Association. You smell like the company you work with. You smell like the company you work with. Oh, I spoke to one of my mentors. He said, that thing you're talking about is not in your lineage, so it can't be on you. My God, that's powerful. That's powerful. If it has not happened to people I follow, because what follows you determines who you follow. Association. If you work with people who don't pray, you don't, at the end of the day, you first of all be praying. One day you wake up and not pray. <laughs> Have you called someone before? Maybe at 7.30 or 8 o'clock, say, oh, sorry, I was praying. Then when you cut the phone, you say, you'll be like, wow, I've not prayed today. <laughs> Let me pray. Have you tried to go to your friend's house? Even if you're married, you went to your spouse. Oh, you looked in the sitting room. You looked, oh, she's praying. He's praying. You went back and started praying. But even in your house, there's no prayer. Everybody you work with, nobody can agree with you. Oh, you're a man. You're, you're saying, my wife prays. <laughs> You are not the pastor of your house. Your child cannot wake up and say, I had a dream. And you take authority. You say, I go and tell your mom. <laughs> She's the one that prays. <laughs> it's wrong. It's wrong. Number four. What's the first one? Second one, God's mercy. Third one, association. Fourth one, upbringing that you're used to. Upbringing. You're used to God being good and you being neutral. It can start like that, but as time goes on, you will look for someone else. Even though that's your purpose, you will look for someone else. You will not be replaced. Yeah. Number five, because of time, I, I got a rush. Satan. Satan. He makes sure you don't do God's will. He will do all sorts he can pull strings. He can make things happen so that you don't do God's will. Child of God, you're listening to me. I don't know what's happening right now that you want to be bounced off. Get back on track. It's a setup of the enemy. It's a script. Don't act it out. In James chapter 4 verse 7, the Bible says, Submit therefore to God. Submit to God. Then resist the devil and he will flee, not from God, from you. I love the way the message translation puts it. Message translation says, so let God walk his will in you. Yeah, a loud no at the devil and watch him scamper. He doesn't have power if you do God's will. In 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, which I'm going to close with because of time, the Bible says, casting down arguments. You know the meaning of arguments? Anything arguing God's will in your life, casting it down. And every item that exalts itself against what God has said concerning you, you cast it down. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. What God has said, verse 6, Bible says, I'm being ready to punish all disobedience when your own obedience is complete. I pray in the name of Jesus that any aspect of your life that the enemy is winning, anywhere is hiding to put you and continue to be in suffering is exposed this morning. Amen. And there's an arrested development. Every single thing the enemy is doing is arrested today. Amen. You'll shine again. Amen. You'll smile again. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. God will never submit you to the will of your trust. It is well with you. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Lift up your hands and give thanks. That's the way you receive God's word. You give thanks. 
If there's anything God has spoken to you, mention it. And say, thank you, Lord, for this.